Hello, beautiful, precious family of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we were talking about tabernacling with God, and I want to just discuss a little bit about, in the very beginning, um, Genesis, Adam was the son of God, and you see that genealogy all the way to Jesus um, in the first uh, book of the New Testament in Matthew. Uh, the genealogy that uh, of Jesus and how he was in the David David line and all the way back to Adam, who was named the Son of God, and that God had made him in the similitude and the likeness of God. And in um, the when Adam and Eve ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they died because God, he is he's the truth and he is the truth. He tells the truth and he is the truth. He's not like man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So he doesn't have to repent. Um, and so with that, I wanted to talk about Adam and Eve and then about the last Adam, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, and his woman, um, which is those that are born again um, in him, hid in him, um, and understanding the fruit, the different, har the harvest and, um, that's happening and how he provided during the, in the wilderness, he provided for, um, his people. He led them through the waters. He led Moses through plaguing, um, as he plagued, uh, Pharaoh and his army he led them and through the water of the, of the sea and he and God had separated the waters and you see God doing a similar thing right now separating separating the water of the wicked the words of the wicked and the water of God the rivers of living waters from heaven um, the rivers of living waters comes from the throne of God and then you see the wicked their waters come from below. So it's a type of separating the light from the darkness as he did in, in Genesis. And, and the Red Sea, when he separated the Red Sea so that the Red Sea wouldn't fall on them, um, he put the, he put it up on both sides so they can go through on dry land. Hallelujah. Um, in the end time, he says that he's going to, he's going to drain the water. All right. And then, um, so we have to be in the spirit, beloved. We have to be in the Holy Spirit. Um, we see that Jesus, when he was on the cross, he drained both, when the spear went in his side, he, both blood and water ran down out of his side and he was crucified and died. So we see that the water was drained out of his body. His, the blood was drained out of his body. Um, and then the resurrected Christ, which they saw him after his, his death, burial and resurrection, uh, walking with them and talking with them, our Lord in heaven, um, before he ascended into heaven, uh, after he had gone up and shown, shown the Father that he had completed the work, that he resurrected a holy man, and sin, nothing touched him, um, so he was perfect when he was resurrected. He was perfect and holy. And so he got to go show the Father that of lights, the Father of spirits, that he had fulfilled what he did, and the blood on the mercy seat, praise the Lord. And so now we have mercy and grace through the blood of the Lamb of God. And then he walked with the apostles, and he breathed on them and said, Receive ye my spirit. So uh, the Bible says that a man um, leaves a woman and joins, uh, leaves his father and mother and joins, and is joined to uh, their wife, and the two become one flesh. And that's the way Adam and Eve were in the beginning also. Um, and then in the new creation, there's the last Adam, uh, the Lord in heaven, Jesus Christ, um, the Word of God, Christ Jesus, I guess you could say. Um, the Word of God is the head of the body. And the body, he says he loves the body like he loves his own flesh. And you see that when Saul was being uh, shown that he was the Christ and Paul was, he was Saul, he was being shown his brightness and glory. And um, you see that he said, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecute me? 
So Saul was persecuting the church of the living God. And so he was saying, me, about the church. So he sees his own body as a church. And the scriptures say that a man should love his wife as he loves his own body. So he was describing how he feels about the church. And so, um, so we see that um, in Christ... There's neither male nor female, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, but one spirit, one body, one faith, our hope, hallelujah, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So in the same way um, that he loves us, um, Adam was to love Eve. And I believe that when they ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what had happened was um, the um, the presence of the Lord that he had to move them out of the garden so they wouldn't eat of the tree of the life of life and I believe something would have happened if they had done that because they would have ended up in a state of what that death state forever and ever um, so God put them out of the um, the garden and until Jesus could come and now when Jesus is dying on the cross he says to the man that believed he said today you will be with me in paradise so um, he brings us back into paradise through his he does it he meets with us you know whenever we're gonna leave when we're gonna close our eyes here uh, he'll be with us in uh, going through into passing over to the other side he'll be with us and in fact um, my grandpa, I've talked about this, how he was there with him at his, at the UCI. He said that um, Jesus was right next to him. So, um, thank you, Lord, for being with my grandpa. Um, and so, he, that's how much he loves us. He's going to come and rescue us. Praise the Lord. He's the good shepherd, the scriptures say, and that he's going to lead us into that promised land. And the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, that promised land, that place of rest, um, obviously isn't here, okay? We look for a city, the scriptures say, a holy city, all right? Whose maker and builder is the Lord in heaven. God is the maker and builder of that holy city. And that's a place where uh, the last Adam, the Lord Jesus, and his people, Israel, which the Gentiles are grafted into Israel, according to the scriptures, and Israel, here's a little information about who Israel is. So Israel, the people Israel that are the branches, okay, on that that tree, and the root and the offspring of Jesse, the the king on David's throne, the Lord Jesus, you know, uh, our Messiah. He is that um, that branch, the righteous branch, and the root um, and the and the oil from the from God is the oil that comes in and uh, so that's really important to know that that and Jesus even said my father is greater than I at sometimes because he is a, a product of his father he came out of union from with his father um, and so what the scriptures say about that tree it's a it's a good tree we see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a bad tree if you eat of it you die okay um, they're going to produce their own kind of children. Um, but the tree of life, our Lord, um, this tree, um, Israel, uh, you see in the scriptures, God says, Israel, my son, my firstborn. Okay. So Jacob in the Old Testament became Israel, right? Jesus is saying the firstborn is Israel and it says my firstborn Israel my firstborn okay um, and so the the scriptures say that the children of Israel all right the children of Israel so if that righteous branch has children these are spiritual children it's very clear he didn't have any any children of his own uh, in the earthly his children are spiritual because the seed of the word is what is seeded in someone's heart 
and then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, by the power of word of the word of God, the power of God, and then God adds to the church daily, such as should be saved, and that is God's tree, all right, the tree of life, hallelujah, um, which the Bible says is in the Old Testament is the law is like a tree of life, you know, um, and this is something very important to understand. If he's the law, right? He gave the law. God was the lawgiver. God was the law. Um, his law is good and holy and perfect. And um, that's why he. some people will say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not do this? Did we do that? And he'll say, depart from me. You who practice lawlessness, I never knew you. You know, he doesn't know them because they're not baptized with the spirit. They're not born again. And so the law is not completed in them. Christ is... Um, it says in the scriptures that the law is fulfilled in us. We're complete in him. Okay. Because we're in him and he's in us. So that's a very intimate thing. That's like um, Adam and Eve becoming one flesh. And so we become one flesh with Christ. Praise the Lord. The last Adam. This is the new creation. Hallelujah. That will be incorruptible and immortal, okay? That is, it says it in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. This corruption will put on corruption. This mortal will put on immortality. So if we say that our flesh that gets sick and and uh, like my, my grandpa is in the grave, you know, if we say that is God's child, that's, that's, a, that's a child. That flesh is dead for the cause of sin. But the spirit inside the Lord says he has something stored up for us in, in heaven, a new, a new, uh, a new uh, body stored in heaven. Even though we, we, we live by the Spirit knowing that we're living stones in the earth, but in heaven we're no longer stones, beloved. We're the, te we're the temple, there's no walls in heaven. So we're walls of salvation and gates of praise as ambassadors for Christ. In heaven there's no temple because the people are there. It's a, it, there's a temple, but it's, it also says there's no temple. Because in heaven, the word is settled. There's no battle going on. We don't have to set up walls. We don't have to worry about the devil coming in and getting on the walls and clinging in and digging, uh, what does it call this in the scriptures, burrowing into the, into the, um, the tavern, the walls. Okay, he's burrowing into the flesh, the corruptible flesh. He's attaching himself to flesh, to that corruptible flesh, because we came into his land through Adam and Eve. We're in his land. We're sojourners and pilgrims here. I know that a lot of people want to say, oh, this is our home. This is where we No, we're called sojourners and pilgrims in the flesh and the blood and the water. All right. In the, in the new creation in Christ, that's our eternal home. And that's where the land flowing of, with milk and honey is. And in fact, in Christ, he was 